Hey team, welcome back to my channel. The source code for this video is available on my GitHub account. Go to github.com software nuggets. Go to repositories, repositories, then look for node.js. Go to the folder node using PostgreSQL and there you see the source code. Look at the prereqs first. Make sure that we have npm installed, pg installed, and have the username password for our database available. Let's begin. Now I'm going to be using an app called PG Admin and it's version 8.9 to type in our SQL statements to create a table and create our functions. Now I have tested this code to work in versions 14, 15, and 16. But in this demonstration, I'll be using their latest and greatest uh, PostgreSQL 16 in a database called Postgres. And this is where I'll be creating it. So we're going to begin by creating a table called Ledger. And it has four columns, ID, coin name, price, and AO date. You may hear me refer to this as as of date. Now notice this ID column is a type serial. That's to say auto incrementing number. That's all it is. And that's also my primary key. So that means this number will be unique. Now coin name is the name of our crypto coin. And I'm allowing up to 60 characters and it's required. That's what not null means. Now price numeric 2010. Why so many over here? Well, coins like SHIB, you know, they have dot zero 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 and then some value. So I need at least 10 digits of precision. Now as of date, default is the current timestamp. So that will automatically, if I don't provide it, it will give me the current timestamp. That's the date and the time. There's our table ledger. Let's continue. Our first function we're going to write is insert crypto into ledger. Ledger was the name of our table. Notice I'm only using two two of the columns. Remember, ID auto generates. AO date, I automatically get current timestamp. That's why I didn't provide them here. Then I'm going to say insert into ledger, the coin name and price, the values. I'm going to convert the coin name to uppercase and provide the price and return ID. Now remember, ID is our serial number. So you're going to get back whatever that serial value is and I'm going to put that into V underscore ID. Notice my returns. I'm going to return an integer. I had to declare VID as an integer and I'm going to return that down here. So insert into ledger, all done. Our next function is called get current price. Notice one input parameter. It's the coin name. And I'm going to return numeric 2010. Well, you know that's the price. Now I'm going to declare V price as that same data type. And then I'm going to do our select statement. Notice I'm going to get the price from ledger where coin name equals, oh, I have to convert that to uppercase. Then I'm going to order by as of date descending. So that means the latest record will be on top. And I'm going to limit that to one. That means we're only going to get back one record. Then I'm going to return that V price. And that's what the user will get. That's our second function. We have one more to go. Our final function, get all prices. Remember, one input parameter. So what's going to happen is I'm going to return a table. Now this table, that's almost the same structure as our table that we defined above. Let me show you the difference. There's only one. Here I'm saying ID integer. Up here I said ID is serial. Can't use that down here in this. I just want the value that's already stored in the table, which is a integer. Now, P coin, that's the name of the coin. And I want to make sure that it's not null or the length of that is if it's zero, I'm going to give you an error message. Else, I'm going to return a query. So here's my select command. I'm going to get the ID, the coin name, the price, and the as of date from ledger where that coin name equals the coin name that I sent through the signature. Now remember, this is going to return a table. Now that's all the PostgreSQL functions that we're going to add for this video. Now I'm just going to test those to make sure that those functions work. Now the first thing I do is do a select statement from our table. Notice my last ID value is set at 36. Now my next one is I'm going to say insert crypto into ledger. 
This is the name of my coin and this is the value. Now where do I get that? There is a website called coinmarketcap.com and you can see here Bitcoin, you know, like all the way down to something else, but we're just going to be using Bitcoin. Notice the current value is 67,000. Oh, just changed 67,266. Let's use that value. So 66,206.22. That is my value. Now, when I do an insert, remember, I'm only sending in two columns, but there are four columns in that table. Those other two columns will auto generate. So notice 37 just got put in there. If I go select star from there, you can see 37. There's the 206 number that I typed in. So that's the way the form will work when we insert data. I give two columns and the other two are auto generated. Now the next one is get current price for Bitcoin. This is going to return this number 66206. Watch this. And you can see that. And our last one is I want to get all of the prices that I have for Bitcoin. And there they are. That is all the SQL that we'll need to learn in this video. Let's now go look at Node.js. On line one, constant pool equals required PG. This line imports the PostgreSQL library, the pool module. It allows us to manage multiple database connections efficiently. It's crucial for handling concurrent database operations. Here's a tip that might help you out. Come right click on PostgreSQL or whatever your database is called and go down to PS Tools. Notice here are your host name, your port, your database name, your username. You'll have to know your password. On line three to nine, we initialize the connection pool with specific database credentials. This setup optimizes performance by reusing connections and managing resources effectively. Now for sure, you will need to change the username and password and possibly port before you begin. On line 11, you can see that this is an asynchronous function, insert crypto into ledger, and it handles the insertion of cryptocurrency data into our ledger table. It ensures data integrity by validating inputs and managing database connections. You can see on line 16 to 28, we're just validating our input. And then on 28, we are going to use pool connect, which acquires a client from the connection pool. This approach allows multiple database operations to occur concurrently, enhancing efficiency and performance. Notice on line 33, I'm actually using select insert crypto into ledger. That is the same command I executed in PostgreSQL. And then we have placeholders for our parameters, coin name and price. And there you have the insert crypto into ledger function. Let's continue. On line 54, another asynchronous function, get all prices too. Now remember, this is I just send the coin name and I get many rows back. You can see on 57, we connect. 60, we actually perform the SQL statement, select star from get all prices. We have a placeholder, $1 that takes in the coin name. And then we're going to loop over that using the rows dot for each. On line 77, asynchronous function get current price. I'm just going to send in a coin name, calling it symbol. You can see here we're going to connect. I'm going to do the SQL statement, select get current price, placeholder as price. Then notice on 81, result.row sub zero. Remember, this function should only return at max one column. Price, and then we're going to release that connection and I'm going to show most recent price to the screen. And finally, function main. Notice main is has three actions, action, symbol, and price. I'm going to get that from the process argv, two, three, and four. Two is the action. Now that is either a insert, get, or a table. Three is the symbol. Well, we know that is our Bitcoin, and we're going to convert that to uppercase. 
and four is the price. So we're going to like do an if condition on action. Is the action an insert? Is the action a get? Or is the action a table? And then we are going to call the appropriate function. Now, if you don't provide me the symbol or the price, I'm going to show you how to use this app. I'm calling it usage and you can see that right here, how to use the app. At the very end, I'm going to say pool ends. At the top of the program, kind of like at the very bottom here, I'm going to call main and then I'm going to catch console errors. And that wraps up the source code. For this solution. Let's now use this program we've just written. Notice I've typed in node crypto underscore dbjs. So I'm software nuggets, but this is how you use the app usage node crypto dbjs. Now, if you just type in that little bit, you get this form right here. Notice the usage. Or I can insert a symbol, I can get a single symbol, or I can get a table view for a, a coin. Let us begin by inserting a new node. So I can say node crypto insert. Now what is the symbol? Bit BTC and we'll say 1000. I hit enter and notice it says the price for Bitcoin is 1000. Wouldn't we all like? And that's ID is 40. Now to get the last symbol, you just say node crypto get BTC. Then notice I went out and got the last value that I typed in. Now this is a multi-user environment, so you could have a friend, colleague, amigo on another computer doing data entry and you would be able to see it because PostgreSQL can service many people. Now to get a list of all of the Bitcoin prices that I've entered, I can say node crypto table BTC. And here you can see that I've done quite a few entries. And there you have it team, a Node.js program to tap into a PostgreSQL database. If you have any questions or comments about the code you've seen here, please leave that message below. If you've learned a thing or two, a thumbs up would be great as well. Look forward to seeing you back in my next video. Take care.